Welcome, our friends, to a new program from uh, our Verdict of Science is Creation series. Mr. John Mackay, geologist, International Director for Creation Research. Welcome back. Welcome home. <laughs> uh, good day, mate. Good day, good day, good day, Romulus. How are you? Uh, doing great, reading my Bible, doing much better things that some people are doing on, and on their half of the table. <laughs> I've got a few I'll dead things and yeah, living I'll, things I'll stay with it. Yeah, well, I, I guess you, you've got some living ones. I've too, got but some food as well, yeah, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll stay with the spiritual. I'm so glad to see you. Good. Honestly, Good. always. I hope you too. Uh, reading my Bible, uh, I just remembered um, the, the chosen people entering the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua sends them to have a sneak around, and they're bringing back reports, okay? Mm -hmm. Some of them a good report, some of them a bad report. But I <clears throat> guess it's interesting. It's not exactly, it's no doubt what they did see, it was there. I mean, they brought back huge grapes, and if these are big, those were even bigger. But well, read us the report but then. It's, it's not. Don't push me. <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to eat your grapes. Uh, okay. Uh, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, as so we were in their sight. Now, now, is this spiritual or this is exactly what they saw? Well, because it mentions the fact that they were afraid. They, we, we were just like grasshoppers, yeah. you know, stand on the yeah. grasshopper. You're talking about real reaction to a real problem that's mm -hmm. giving them real fear, which produces a real physical result. Mm -hmm. So this is not just spiritual. Mm -hmm. In fact, would you read verse 23 for us, please? There's another clue in here that this is not just to be tipped out as religious. Now I'm lost because I exercised only 33, not 23. Uh, and they came unto the brook of Eschol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they, were bur and they buried between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Okay, so it says there it took two of them to carry one bunch of grapes. Yep. Okay, now either they were pygmies or the grapes were big. Now, uh -huh. we can rule out the pygmy bit because, you see, they'd been captives in Egypt, slaves in Egypt for centuries. And the one thing the Egyptians did was kept records. Right, and you can see Semitic people painted mm -hmm. on their temples and their, their pyramids, on their coffins, etc. And they were no bigger and no smaller than anybody else. And Egyptians were smart enough not to work to death pygmies who are just, you know, very smart people Useless. do small things. That's yeah. right. So, therefore, we know they weren't talking about grapes like mm -hmm. this. Like, we picked this up at the green market mm -hmm. this morning, mm -hmm. right, at the, the vegetable market, and that's a reasonable sized mm -hmm. bunch of grapes. Most mm -hmm. farmers today... Was before you started to eat them. <laughs> well, that's true, too. <laughs> They'd be fairly happy to yeah. get constant bunches like that. Mm -hmm. But we don't live in a world where it takes two people to carry one bunch of grapes. Mm -hmm. So again, the point we've been making is the world has been madly celebrating Darwin over the past 18 months or so, mm -hmm. that the world has changed. Mm -hmm. So Darwin had half a truth, mm -hmm. and then he turns it into a whole lie, because mm -hmm. he said grapes used to be seaweed. And the Bible said, no, grapes used to be huge. Mm -hmm. When the world was a better place, mm -hmm. when the world was closer to the beginning, mm -hmm. the grapes were big. Mm -hmm. And then it adds the interesting comment, they not only took back big grapes, they saw big people. Mm -hmm. Grapes, I haven't come across anybody who says, oh, the grapes are spiritual. No, grapes are delicious <laughs> because they're physical, right? Yeah. And so if verse 23, which is talking about a physical place, the brook, the stream, yeah. a physical valley, the valley of Eshkol, right, mm -hmm. where they cut down, physically cut down, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and physically carried, then you're not talking about spiritual stuff. Yeah. There were big people mm -hmm. and there were big grapes. Mm -hmm. Now, remember we've been 
uh, dealing with Darwin in this series, and mm -hmm. particularly his book mm -hmm. Origin of Species. Mm -hmm. Darwin was independently wealthy, not like you, right? He, he didn't care what people thought about what he said because he didn't need your money. So when his father sent him away, you know, sailing around the planet on the good ship Beagle, mm -hmm. um, he went to South America, okay. and there he found some big things, and they impressed him. Now, do you know what I mean by the word sloth, the animal that's a sloth? I'm not describing your attitude. I'm describing I an animal. I just wanted to have that <laughs> cut out of this. <laughs> I, you, you, where, where does a sloth live? Uh, not on the ground. No, it lives hanging upside down in the trees, and it's famous for putting one leg after the other, but it takes two months <laughs> to do it, right? So passing into the English language is the word slothful, right? Yep. It's, it's a very slow-moving animal. In fact, it goes so slowly, the, the algae grows on its fur. Yeah, I've seen them. <laughs> just can't, it's unbelievable that you can, you can grow so slowly a plant takes root. Um, but anyway, the sloth in, in South America today is not all that big, maybe this mm -hmm. big, right? Mm -hmm. But when Darwin went down to Chile in South America, he found fossil sloths. Mm -hmm. But here's what was interesting. They were huge. Right? Compared to the modern one, they were three and four times the size. Mm -hmm. And if you read his book, Origin of Species, Charles Darwin argues this way. Sloths used to be monsters, now they're midgets. That's change, and if change is true, it's proof of evolution. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on further and basically is implying in his book and basically his attitude in life is if change is true, the Bible is false. Mm -hmm. Now, you just read about the size of grapes. How big were they? Those ones? No, the ones in the Bible. Well, uh, but they should be about two-thirds, three-quarters of a size of a human being. Yes, they were huge, yeah, right? Yeah. So therefore, the Bible is saying change is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, Goliath, who's one of the giants yeah. they finally meet. How big was he? Well, he, he was much bigger than anyone else. So. He wasn't as good looking as you and I, but he was bigger, yeah, right? Exactly. In fact, you know, probably somewhere nearly two and a half to three meters, yeah, sort of that, right? Sort of. Big and impressive. Yeah. And uh, now people don't usually reach that height mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. and those who do die young. Mm -hmm. Goliath had brothers and sisters, so even the giant people in those days did better than any giant people do today. Mm -hmm. Now, I brought along, well, a real deadhead. I know it's one of your favorites because yes. we talked about it before the program, so hold it up for the cameras. Will do. Give them a little look at this skull. And uh, you, you mentioned that this guy was one of your favorites. Can, yes. can you explain that? Because I live where this guy comes from in Australia, and he's not all that popular out there at all. Well, actually, this is the skull of a Tasmanian devil. Mm. It's not the devil part that I like. Ah. But when they're, <clears throat> even, um, when they're young, they are really so cute until they start to do those funny noises and get to the, each other and rip their faces yeah, off. Look, open the mouth so they can see just, the teeth. They're just huge. Huge teeth and unbelievably big muscle yeah, scars on the bones. You can, you can bones. see over here, there's holes that's Yeah, big. the muscles fit in yes. there. Right? And so they have unbelievably powerful yeah. jaws. But of course, we call it a devil because devil is not very good. Mm -hmm. Now, on our programs, we've repeatedly stressed Genesis 131, where it says God made everything very mm -hmm. good, and whatever the devil was like in the beginning, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have gone around and goes, ah, and ripping into yeah. other devils. Yeah. Now, even over here in Europe, you've heard what's happening to our Tasmanian devils. Yeah, unfortunately, you? yes. What is happening yeah. to them? Well, they seem, seem to be getting some strange... Uh, mouth disease like cancers and yes. tumors and they just look awful and what's happening to them as a result but they're slowly dying out they're actually. slowly dying out and they're called tasmanian devils because they're only found on the island of tasmania, tasmania. but um we've just released a brand new documentary and if folks go to our website creationresearch.net they can get a free preview which features the tasmanian mm -hmm. devil mm -hmm. And really what's happening is the opposite of what Charles Darwin said. Now, just so we don't get this out of context, we started in, in the Bible, giant people, giant grapes. Mm -hmm. We then talked about Darwin, giant fossil sloths, mm -hmm. small living sloths. 
you've got a dead skull of a living Tasmanian devil, mm -hmm. and it's not all that big, no. even though the teeth are huge by comparison. Yeah. But in our documentary, we remind people that they used to be that big. Now, wow. you put your skull alongside of my jaw here. Is that the, 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 the same the animal? Bone. That's the jawbone of the same animal, and you'll see they used to be unbelievably huge by comparison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting, you can have your little Tassie devil back, is the whole picture your Bible gives to us is that when God made the world, it was very good. Sin came in. Sin has produced suffering and struggle and death, and change is true. But it's not evolution. Mm -hmm. Now, would you like to guess where this was found? Apart from in my pocket? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but I, I have no idea. Okay, Australia is a good place to start. Okay. But we call him the Tasmanian devil because he's only found on the island of? Tasmania. Tasmania. Oh, that was found in Australia. This is found ah. on the mainland of Australia. Ah. You see, Tasmania is a little island mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, about 400 kilometers to the south, and that's the only place where he lives. Mm -hmm. But there's abundant evidence from the bones mm -hmm. that he used to live on the mainland of Australia, seems to have died out maybe seven or 800 years ago, and he used to be huge. So like the grapes, they used to be huge, now they're pygmies by yes, comparison. Yeah. The Tasmanian devil used to be huge, used to live on the mainland, seems to have died out on the mainland for reasons unknown. Now he's only on Tasmania, and he's dying out for sure. He's gotten tiny. So change is true. Would you like to guess how they're getting that facial cancer? Well, I know for one thing, as I said, if you watch them without them doing anything, just staring at you, mm -hmm. they're really so cute. They look like little <laughs> funny, something in between a piglet and a, a, a cute dog. But when they open their mouth and, mouth and they start a bark or whatever, do their side. Growl. Just, uh, yeah, actually they just get into one another and bite off their own, the other one's mouth. It's yes, just they do. unbelievable what they do. In fact, what seems to be happening is the cancer they're getting, which is killing them off, is spread by their biting, biting. each other. So uh -huh. it's self-defeating. Mm. But the very cancer is caused by mutation. Now the mutation is affecting their normal cells uh -huh. and somehow or other when it gets on their teeth, they can pass it on. Uh -huh. But did you catch the word I used, mutation? Yes. It's a genetic change. Yes. Yes. But in the present world, despite the popularity of Darwin's theory of evolution, natural selection mm -hmm. plus mutation mm -hmm. plus time produces advancement, in the real world, we observe natural selection plus change, like mutation, over time is killing that creature off. Mm -hmm. Now there's another factor, let's see if you can guess it. They live only on the island of Tasmania. Have you guessed it yet? I mean, they're as mad as hatters as far as we Australians are concerned because if you, I mean, I'm much bigger than Tasmanian Devil, but if I get near one, it goes round and round, 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 round. You're like on the old Bugs Bunny cartoon show. Oh, really? I, I, they really do that. They go snarl, spit, 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 <laughs> right? And, and you think, what's gone wrong <laughs> yeah. with this animal, right? And I suspect it thinks that we'll watch it going round and round and we'll get dizzy and fall over and it'll leap on us and attack us. But they don't normally attack people. They're only tiny by comparison. Uh -huh. But if they only live on an island, then what do you know about each Tasmanian devil must be related to who? Uh, They're only to, on an island. Oh, there's how do you call in, uh, they're inbred. Yeah, yeah. They're inbred, yeah. right? So there's another factor. Uh -huh. And so what you notice in your Bible is a change is true. Mm -hmm. You start with Adam. Mm -hmm. Now, did Adam have any mutations? No, he didn't. He was made in the image of? Of God. He was perfect. Mm -hmm. He was fresh. No time had passed. The world was perfect. His genes were in excellent condition. If the grapes were still huge in Goliath's day, mm -hmm. you would have had one as big as a coconut, I guess, in the Garden of Eden. And the grapes were in perfect condition. Mm -hmm. So Adam had the best food. The Tasmanian devils had the best food. Mm -hmm. The sloths had the best food. Perhaps they went a bit faster in those days. Who knows? <laughs> but the reality is, as we come down to the present, you think of what's happened to any animals that get isolated in any particular place. Mm -hmm. They eventually become inbred, mm -hmm. and there's another factor which in the end mm -hmm. will multiply the mutations Mutations. and degenerations and mm -hmm. kill them off. 
it's got nothing to do with us. We don't seem to have any effect on the Tasmanian devils. Scientists are working really hard to try and save them. And Romulus Campan, for one, hopes they succeed, correct? Yes. Oh, I'll give you a new word. Um, a baby kangaroo in its mother's pouch. Yes. What's it called? A baby kangaroo in his mother's pouch. Yes. We have a special word in Australia for a baby kangaroo. It's one of those Australian words. It is, yes. yes. It's called a joey. A joey. Now, do you yeah. know what a baby Tasmanian devil's called? Because it's a marsupial too, and they have pouches. So what's a baby Tasmanian devil called? A toey. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. They're actually all marsupial babies yeah. are called joeys. Would oh, you, really? Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. It's just that one of those words. It's a bit slothful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of bit of information you can use in a mm -hmm. trivia game. Okay, Joey? Joey, okay. yeah, Joey. And all babies Freddy. in pouches. <laughs> all babies in pouches it's are called Joey's. Joey's, okay? okay? Whether Thank they're you. boys or girls is okay. fine. Okay, now, the Bible says God made the world very good. Mm -hmm. The Bible says even by the time you get to Moses, mm -hmm. who sent the spies into Canaan, the world is still better then than it is now. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, do you remember the description the Bible gave of the land of Canaan? It was flowing with... Milk and honey. Now, if you go there today, what's it like? Uh, well, it's blossoming some of again, but that's not anymore the land of... There's lots of honey. desert, isn't yes, there? Yes, There's is. harsh life. Yes. In fact, there's people throwing bullets and yeah. guns yeah. at each other. It's yeah. not good anymore. Yeah. Okay, so what you've got, and I repeat this over and over again, Charles Darwin was not only deceived, he set out to willingly deceive us. Mm -hmm. He identified change, and then he said if change is true, evolution is true, and if evolution is true, the Bible is false. Mm -hmm. Half of that is true. Mm -hmm. And don't be surprised the devil discovered long ago that the best lies mm -hmm. are those that are mostly true. Mm -hmm. Half of what Darwin says is true, mm. but here's the half that isn't. He said if big sloths turn into little sloths, then tiny amoebas turn into Romulus Campan. The first half is true, the second half is a lie mm. because it leads to people disbelieving who? God. God. Mm. And that in the end is tragic, not mm. just on this planet, but for eternity. Mm -hmm. You know what? I did a mistake Okay. At, in the very beginning. Just for our viewers to see how much of a blessing it is to work through a program and just leave it to the Lord as He leads. We're just having a small discussion in the beginning. And what you see is just how the Lord is blessing a discussion and the friendship for now so many years. Actually, uh, it's an interesting friendship. Actually, I am here because of you coming first to uh, Hungary in 1991. I became a uh, believer in Jesus Christ, a Christian, uh, mm -hmm. following your ministry and following a deep, uh, a deep um, search within by God and uh, getting delivered from my suicidal thoughts and being actually thrown into the arms of that Jesus Christ you spoke about at the Medical University in Budapest. Mm -hmm. I'm just mentioning this for you to see the, the end result of a faithful report when John Mackay came here, we had still giants of communism around, mm -hmm. was there? Uh, weren't you afraid of you seeing those big giants and iron curtains? Because if you, would, if you were afraid of that, I would have probably not be seated here today. Well, one thing that struck me was that having done a, a video like this in England in a mm -hmm. small TV studio, which somehow was smuggled into Hungary, which somehow resulted in a professor saying, mm -hmm. please come mm -hmm. when you can. Mm -hmm. The one thing I knew was that God invented the world. Mm -hmm. God, who is Jesus, mm -hmm. came and died for the world. And God, mm -hmm. who enabled a professor to say, would you come across mm -hmm. to Hungary, mm -hmm. was bigger than any horrors mm -hmm. that you could meet on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And in fact, remember this God who we know as Jesus, mm -hmm. a Greek name, mm -hmm. right, um, is really the Greek version of Joshua. Mm -hmm. And Joshua was sent by Moses with the spies, mm -hmm. and Joshua was the only one who said, God can beat these giants, right? Exactly. And Jesus can beat any big giant mm -hmm. out of your life, mm -hmm. whether it's drug addiction, whether it's you're hooked on money, whether it's any sin, 
Jesus is able to deal with it, just like he dealt with the giant humans back there in the, the so-called mm -hmm. promised land mm -hmm. that he was going to give to the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. So I just mentioned this because in the beginning I said this is was Joshua was mm. sending spies. I have to apologize, friends, and put it back to where Mr. Mackay said it, and I, I, I proved to be very slothful today in my <laughs> thinking, um, because it was Moses sent these uh, spies into the promised land. But interesting enough, as you just mentioned um, um, Joshua, and you just mentioned the Lord Jesus, um, when Moses, Moses sent these spies to spy out the land, actually those who brought, some of those who brought the good report, were actually the ones to carry further the mission, to accomplish the mission. Yes. Okay, um, we've had giants in the Promised Land, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there was a Joshua who, and the Caleb, they've seen things according to God and to the Word of God, and according to God's promises. So if God promised us He would give us the land, okay, we'll go through and just grab it. And they sorted out, yeah, giants, big grapes, big everything, uh, we're just like grasshoppers, said the others, but they, 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 they just didn't care. So, when, what, what could the Lord Jesus accomplish, actually, what the law wasn't able to accomplish? What has happened when Moses sent these they've seen something, there was a good report, those giving the good report. It's like, I interesting, a part of history has finished 2,000 years ago, and the Son of God came, saw the disaster. I mean, I could not imagine how pathetic looked everything. The Lord Jesus stopped above on a hill and just wept. And He said, I've sent prophets to you. You did not want to repent. And what the most majority of people would have said, oh, it's just useless. Look at them. If these, the chosen people of God, are how can the nation could be? Okay. Mm -hmm. And he took the mission further and actually opened through himself the way into the eternal promised land of God. Okay, what's, what's the connection between uh, those giants seen then and let's say the giants we see today? Do we have any spiritual lesson out of uh, devils, grapes, shark's tooth? <laughs> we haven't got to the shark's yeah. tooth yet. The answer is yes, very simple. Uh, you can apply it, say, in my own personal life, because Jesus came looking for me, a science yeah. student. I was reading a book yeah. by an atheist, yeah. right? And evolution was my, my big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus demolished evolution, yeah. right, yeah. and saved me, yeah. and then you have to stand up against the professors, yeah. you have to stand up yeah. against the world. Now the world's bigger than you and the world's yes. bigger than me, yeah, right? Definitely. But in reality, if he can take Joshua and Caleb and beat the giants, yeah. then he can take any of us, yeah. right, and make us anew yeah. and put his person in us yeah. to do that because it's not us, yeah. right? It's the same as he promised Abraham, yeah. you know, I will make of you a blessing to yeah. many nations. Yeah. Yeah. And he can do that with Romulus Campan, he can do it with yeah. John Mackay because he's done it over and over again mm. through the whole history of the mm. planet mm. and it doesn't matter what size the opposition is mm. our God is able because mm. really this Jesus is not just the man you saw at Galilee mm. he's not just the man you saw nailed to a cross mm. he's not even just the body you saw raised from mm. the dead mm. because he is the man who is also God mm. right and as God he created the universe and I keep telling people over and over again mm. Anyone who can make the universe in mm. just six days, mm. I can't think of any problem that's too big for him to solve. What grapes, what good giants would we, could we see in the promised land we sort of spiritually already arrived in, in our Savior? Um, okay, because they saw the big giants, but even so they saw the big grapes. Okay, we see the big opposition. And we've had an example a few days ago. Remember, we went to Cluj. Okay? Mm -hmm. And actually, the ones who denied organizing um, an event at the university in Cluj, they came over to a smaller event organized for you to lecture. And uh, they popped up with an interesting question. One of them said, and I, I'll maybe just blow your point a bit at, the, uh, at uh, the, the beginning of the question. He said, well, he has some giant things 
getting bigger, and that proves evolution. Can you just talk about it? Because I cannot talk <laughs> without laughing. Okay? Well, if you look at Darwin, you can trace this all the way back to Darwin, because Darwin said plant breeding mm -hmm. is a good evidence mm -hmm. of you know evolution mm -hmm. so we've taken roses mm -hmm. we took the roses from china we took the roses from western europe mm -hmm. and we crossed them mm -hmm. and look we've doubled the number of petals yes. and so we've made the plants bigger mm -hmm. and this must be change this must be evolution mm -hmm. because he did miss one little point we started with roses we ended mm -hmm. with roses mm -hmm. the size of it mm -hmm. has not changed the kind of it so if you were there in canaan you would have seen goliath he had an arm on this side, an arm on this side, and two <laughs> legs at the bottom, right? Yeah. He was recognizingly mm. a human, human giant. Mm. But in reality, he was the same kind as you and I, no matter what size mm. he was. Mm -hmm. And the lecturer's point about making things bigger, well, I cry kept trying to say, no, look, has it changed kind or is it still the same kind of plant that you started with and in the end he not only conceded it was the same kind but he adamantly said it must be evolution mm -hmm. and you get back to one thing why did he want evolution to be true because if evolution isn't true guess who he has to face up to in the end god god right mm -hmm. and that was the point that he needed the hammered home because he wanted the evolution to be true not because there was any evidence for it mm -hmm. but because it eliminated god mm -hmm. which brings us back to our chief and most popular atheist friend richard dawkins mm -hmm. he wants evolution to be true not because there's any observation of mm -hmm. it we've said you know quoted him over and over again evolution has been observed it just hasn't been observed while it's been happening mm -hmm. nonsense he wants it to be true because it gets rid of God the Creator because he wants God the Creator out of the picture because he doesn't want to face God the judge. Mm -hmm. right? And there's the connection. God as Creator has the automatic right to be God the judge. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thrilled with the fact that he has the privilege also to become God the Creator mm -hmm. through his authority to be judge. Mm -hmm. One is justice the other is mercy. Mm -hmm. One is law, the other is grace. They're flip sides mm -hmm. of the same person and this is what it's all about actually. It's not just about big grapes, giant Tasmanian mm -hmm. devils or even our sharks and I just bring these up because we've used these before. We right? don't have much time. They so show the same trend mm -hmm. and if we're not careful uh, we'll even kill them off and the world will continue to change mm -hmm. but it will degenerate. And the point of that is very simple. It should make you and I realize something is wrong with the planet. The mm -hmm. Tasmanian devils are dying out. Mm -hmm. The sharks are threatened. Mm -hmm. Right? The kangaroos are in trouble. Mm -hmm. We're in trouble. Help. We need a savior. Okay. For Mr. Dawkins and his friends, let me just point out one thing. You may put or dig your heads in the sand of evolution. But in the end, you'll have to pull it out when the time of judgment has come. Because if you have to cross an intersection with your car, there's a sign saying stop. You do not stop deliberately. You say, I don't want to see that sign. And you just cross through the intersection and got hit by a car you, or you hit another car. There's no police officer. There's no judge on earth who would say, because you deliberately decided not to see the sign, you just are absolved of what you've done. So I just want to remind you that God has set his laws and rules to be seen by people and to be judged by them in order to see the need for a savior. So I just want to encourage you up to when you have still the time to pull out your head off the sand of evolution as this man helped me to do. Well, nearly 20 years ago, um, you still have the time to see the stop sign stop and ponder the great gift that God has sent 2,000 years ago through his blessed son, the Lord Jesus, who bared the thorns of our sins upon his head, bleed, he bled to death, rose again the third day just to assure us that he has conquered death. Mm -hmm. And we praise the Lord for, um, for what he has done and urge you friends to, to stop and ponder and take advantage of the, this gracious gift of life that he's still holding in his uh, blessed stretch hand. Thank you, Mr. Mackay. That was a very interesting and very good program. You're still a debtor with the shark's tooth to talk about some more in the next program.
Have a great time. May God bless you.